Hello and welcome to the third game of today. It is day number 22 in Star Ladder Season 6. We are here with Z-Rage and Empire. And both of these two teams, they want to get some wins. We know that Z-Rage has got four losses in Star Ladder so far. Four losses is kind of like the maximum you can have in terms of losses if you still want to have a chance to go to Kiev. Because so they have to win this match. But Empire, they have to win this match as well because if they lose yep. a couple more matches, then they will get dropped to the Pro Series. And that is not where they want to be. Of course, for today, we'll have a three-man team to provide you with all the covers that you need. We have got Kpoptosis who will be providing you with all the stats and all the extra information about all the players during this game and of course the one that you will hear it is my co-caster it is Vikermond welcome back good to be back Shiver just check my mute real quick it's I'm pretty interested in seeing what happens because as you said Empire at this point three and nine with only three games left in their season they have to fight to avoid automatic relegation yeah the bottom two slots so obviously one is taking up by Q pad but there's a slot there that if they get it they're automatically out of star series next season which, if they have a stable, strong roster by then, would Five be really bitterly remaining. disappointing. Whereas, at least if they place something like, you know, 13th, they can play for relegation. And if they place 12th, then they're fairly safe. So, critical wins at this point for Empire. They really, really need to try to pull something together. And they can. I mean, it's a talented team. Yeah, they, they are a star team. We are having a new stand-in drafting for them today, Sunlight. The other standing we've seen before, Riku has been standing with him. Uh, with sending in for them quite a few times but sunlight is a new name to me so we'll see what he can do here for empire as they actually first picked the nyx assassin a hero that we don't see that often anymore the bands were quite centered with a dark seer and a lone druid and a wisp and a life stealer for z-rage but because there was no bad rider band then z-rage was able to pick that up including the shadow demon which is considered to be that counter to the bad rider so on the same team will help them out a lot as there's also now supports getting banned out with the Lina getting banned out, so no follow-up Light Strike Ray up on that disruption, and the Illuminate that works uh, well together with the Nyx Assassin, and of course I mean by that one, the Keeper of Light gets banned out by Z-Rage. The Gyrocops drop on Empire, still a pretty strong pickup for them as well, as we now see some mids getting banned out. Empire preparing for their own mid pickup by banning out the Puck. Yeah, Sunlight, if memory serves, he is a uh, pretty common standard in the Russian scene. He might have been, uh, I, he, I've seen him for IC Cup before, I don't know if he, it was as a stand-in or he was one of their former players, but I've definitely seen him play before for IC Cup, so uh, he's been around the scene, he's not just like some random brand new pubber. So this is a perfectly fine stand-in for Empire to go with, and of course Riku, we've seen him play for them before. It's interesting, Empire's revolving door of drafters is what's really interesting to me, like it seems like they've been using one or another stand-in as a drafter for almost every game. Ten I wonder if seconds. that's because Scandal, Blow, and Light just don't want to draft personally, Five or maybe they're remaining. feeding suggestions to the stand-in. I'm not sure. Well, of course, I mean, it's... I don't think they can draft, but you need to be having like the, that captain role regardless. So you yeah. have to look for someone in the captain role because as a solo mid, you can't take that on. It's too much pressure. Off lane, same story. Carry, so simply have a number four or five position that can do that for you. And so best would be to have also that mastermind that can also draft. So I, I kind of like it. It's something that we don't normally see when people are stand-ins. They normally are playing, you know, uh, roles that, that don't really require too much extra. In, like in terms of drafting, when do we ever see stand-in right. drafting? And it's it's a really good chance to for new players or for newer players or players that are looking for a team rather to try and prove right. that they are masterminds and not just skilled That's players. That's a good point. I mean, if you're using an, a season to sort of uh, yeah try out people and see how Five they do, you might as well, I guess, see how they draft and not just how they play. So that's a good point. I, I've heard that a lot about the not putting your top three in your captain role, and I agree to some extent, but there are teams that can make it work. I mean, uh, LGD has their mid player as their captain, DK has their uh, number one player as their captain, so you can do it. Some teams can make it work, but I agree with you. If at all possible, it's nice to have it on a support because their core competence is already global map awareness, and that's really what you need for, uh, for a captain. Remaining. Yeah, we have got They're Empire. digging into this time heavily, though, for this Yeah, screen. they wow. have only got eight seconds left. They picked up the Skywrath Mage and the Queen of Pain now for Empire as well. Um, I think they... I, I was kind of thinking, expecting that they already were going to go for the Queen of Pain, considering they banned out the Puck. But maybe still having a bit of a hesitant time because the Templars hasn't got picked up by Z-Rage, and that's, of course, one of Sig Scandal's signature heroes, so... 
Does he really want to do that? We have got Vengeful Spirit getting picked up here, so an aura added to the board. Already looking strong. The combination of Shadow Demon and Vengeful Spirit, not that, like, they don't really have got a massive synergy going on, but of course, right. if you have a Soul Catcher Magic Missile, still gonna lose a lot of damage there. And, uh,. Yeah, the Bed Rider picked up. It's, it's all very strong. Very strong single heroes. They are missing their strong carry so far, but that's why the Alchemist gets banned out by Empire. With the offlaner still missing for Empire themselves, assuming that Skyrath Mage will be a support. The Clockwork was the ban that Z-Rage actually went for, but there's still yeah. plenty of, mid of offlane heroes in the pool. Yeah, there's definitely still some selection of heroes that they can go with, and maybe they could try to go for a Triver's Try as well. I really like Z-Rage's lineup. Among other things, it's an extremely fast Roshan lineup, so we can see them sneak Rosh, even considering the fact that they're on Radiant and Empire's on Dire. Empire will have to be very careful that Z-Rage don't just quickly take a Roshan in between fights, because the combination of the D-Armor from the Vengeful Spirit Wave of Five Terror and the D-Armor from the Templar Assassin Meld means that Roche goes very, very, very quickly, and Empire apparently feel confident that they'll just be able to get a good amount of map control and a lot of kills, because they go with Bounty Hunter for the offlane. Yeah, which is interesting because the, the high ganking potential yeah. with the Bat Rider, with the Templar Assassin, you'd put in favor yeah. of Z-Rage. And I like this Mirana, we've seen it before with the Shadow Demon combination. So we will see it again. Uh, Sharfik actually picks that up, so... I'm curious to see how they're gonna be running this, but we'll, we'll find out. I'm, I'm expecting that to be on the uh, on the, on the safe lane right now. Maybe even aggressive Trident if they want to go for that. They do have the potential, and then Bedred on a safe lane. Would be a very fast Blink Dagger for him as well. So uh, yeah, we'll see I... how they actually run this, because I'm, I'm kinda expecting them to still swap. Yeah, I am also surprised that Sharfik goes for this Marana because Sharfik is playing mid for them and I think a side lane Marana would be much more effective yeah. than a side lane Templar Assassin. That said, they could make the TA work I, as a side lane, I guess. It just seems counterintuitive. If they do run the Marana side lane, I would expect a side lane remaining. safe simply because even though it worked for 4FC, the base damage makes it Five pretty questionable that you remaining. can get your farm in the aggressive tri lane unless you just win by a lot. Plus, Mirana, Vengeful Spirit, Shadow Demon can completely oppress Bounty Hunter. He won't get XP if they play right. True. And we have got some disconnect, so we will be waiting until they come back before we start this game. And we, like all three games so far, I've seen on the sidelines, these two teams have never faced off before. It's like all new kind of matchups that we see here. Of course, Empire yeah. really changing their lineup around, and, and in this this Empire form they have never faced uh, Z-Rage, and to be fair, Z-Rage in, in general, a fairly young team in terms of oh, yeah. um, hero names, They're, sorry, I did They just that. started, uh, I think they just started this team for this season of Star Ladder, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they made it for the um, qualification matches, I believe. Qualification that we saw for a spot that was yeah. abandoned earlier uh, on. Right, for, I believe... Android and Hakan actually left the remainder of the Lions Pride team to join Z Rage, which actually caused Lions Pride, because they had none of their former roster, to lose their slot in this season, which was the slot that Android and Hakan then retook with this team Z Rage. Yes. So that's an interesting little bit of. Um... Yeah, the reason why we don't see. Um, what's his. What, well, L Pride in the, in the thing. Yep. In Star Ladder, I know, uh, right they're a new, bis they're basically 3D Max Plus now. It's a yep. lot of the old 3D Max members. They're not too bad, honestly. I've seen some of their games. It's been pretty good. Yeah, they're doing okay. Uh, we of course got Scandal. He actually is playing the, like this is interesting. I'm kind of still thinking they're gonna swap, but we're seeing Scandal on the Gyro, blow your brain on the Queen of Pain. I was thinking that's gonna be swapped around, but we'll find out that later. Light of Heaven on the Bounty Hunter, not surprising. Riku on the Nyx Assassin and Sunlight playing the Skyrath Mage for Empire in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And looking up towards the Radiant team, Z-Rage, we have Tri-Lane, well actually I don't know about the lanes yet, but we do have Hakan on the bat, their usual offlane player on the Bat Rider, Sharfik their usual mid on the Mirana, and then Android P on the Vengeful Spirit, Medved on the Shadow Demon, and that just leaves, what am I missing? What was their other hero? It Templar was Assassin. Templar Assassin which looks to be for Inquisitor, so if they don't swap, this is going to be sideline carry TA, mid Mirana and offlane Batrider. The offlane Batrider makes sense to me. I'm just somewhat surprised about that tri-lane. Yeah. Not that they couldn't make it work. We've seen TA as a sideline farmer before. It's just a little bit of an un unusual choice. We know that the combination of Mirana and Shadow Demon is pretty strong, 
it so is. Ma maybe they're gonna go for for dual lane mid, but I mean, okay. the combination of yeah. TA Shadow Demon is pretty strong as well. If that Shadow Demon does level two, Soul Catcher gonna be there. Disruption gives TA to set up next to the target and go for right. the incredibly painful meld if there has a Soul Catcher up on the yeah. target. Dual mid is a neat idea because, of course, Venge TA by itself is a pretty good dual lane. Uh, because, again, you get that big D armor from the Wave of Terror plus Mel and the stun to set up TA's damage from Vengeful Spirit. The only issue is it's still kind of tricky to kill a Queen of Pain even when you have a Kunkka and... Sorry, even when you have a Marana and a Shadow Demon. It's not like Kunkka where you can just layer the stuns very easily. You can layer the Sacred Arrow, but it has to land very, very quickly or Queen of Pain will just blink out. If they do, I think they can get kills. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. It's... it's. I'm still I'm still debating if the Marana's actually going to be mid. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe Marana SD in the middle, Venge TA bot, and Batrider off. It's weird, but it can work. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, yeah. These Bounty Hunter, he has good he has good armor, but he has really bad uh, starting, like his strength starting is bad, and his, so his HP pool is low. So if the Venge hits level 2 quickly, um, they can actually get the Bounty Hunter out of the lane from that point onwards, because stun, wave of terror, meld strike, and he has to leave lane, period. And that's yeah. even before he goes stealth. Yeah, and then if you bring sentry wards, there's still gonna be magic missile, and yeah. Yeah. You're you're not gonna be able to get away from that if that's a tri lane that they're gonna run for and he's caught out. He is dead. Yeah. I, I yeah, my point is that <clears throat> my point is that they might not actually need like the full trial all the time, which leaves the Shadow Demon free to be annoying in the mid. Because Queen of Pain is gonna be pretty scared whenever that disruption is, is nearby. Yep. Why are you still waiting? Did they like, Yeah, I don't off? know what the somebody disconnected, so Inquisitor I think has yeah. Reconnecting, rebooting, or I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have an SSD. Probably not. There was also an admin disconnected at the same time. Hmm. But it's okay. We can wait. We can. I have to say, like, the games, even though... Like, the, the games have been starting a bit later. But only about by a little. Because the games are constantly done on the hour. That's true. I don't know how they do it. It's some sort of weird star ladder alchemy that they can make. Yeah. Almost every single game yeah. start and end on time. O only last Friday was an exception to the rule where we actually had it in the end of an hour delay or something like that, but... The like, VP game? Uh, yeah, and, and just some yeah. people being late and then, yeah. that was Well, there was a bit of drama there, but it's okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is quite interesting. Oh, by the way, for people watching yesterday, we had, of course, Quantic playing under all different nicks, as in Goblack naming himself, well, I don't know what it was, but at least Funzi was naming himself Goblack in return, Funzi was Goblack, and Shokska yeah. was naming himself fucking mad, and, and that kind of things. And the uh, Starlighter admins only found out while their game was going on, so they normally have a penalty of bonus time if you do something stupid, but they'll get a penalty still after the game. So, I don't know what it was, but or what it will be. Yeah. But they'll there get penalized yeah. for there fake are pretty nickname. serious rules for not yeah for not using your correct nickname because yeah. that could be an effective um, it's a it's yeah. a mind game. Oh my, my god, we were totally fooled. We were sitting there. Oh my god, is Goblack gonna play OD? It is Goblack mid, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's oh wait a second, and then right. yeah. You check their Steam profiles or whatever. No, uh, for, Villa actually said it. Oh, I see. I see. So yeah, that was yeah. We we were we were we were totally fooled. That's funny. Yeah, and uh, we are having a problem with connected to Steam for uh, for last one there. So Ink Visitor rebooting his PC. Still, so he didn't reboot his PC for now. But oh, we'll wait. We are patient people, and we hope that our viewers are too. <laughs> and if you're not, tough luck. And Apparently there say, was an offlane viper today. In, where? In TPL. Oh I'm pretty God. excited to see this. You're chasing you're chasing viewers away. No. Oh, I'm sorry. No, this <laughs> was like this was hours ago. Oh. I don't no point you. whatsoever watching it <laughs> now, obviously. I'm gonna have to watch that game. I think. Sounds yeah. interesting. If Apparently it there was also a Mask of Ben. Another Mask of Bandit's Batrider is real, man. It's it's gonna be a it's thing. Coming. It's the coming. The problem is survivability, but actually, other than that, it's secretly amazing because uh, Napalm. 
improves your auto damage. So all you need is attack speed to leverage the fact that your auto and damage is actually really good. you can drag someone away real fast. That is also true. Who needs Force Staff when you have Mask of Freaking Madness? I think the last time that we saw a Mask of Madness bed rider, at some point he was fireflying, he popped his Mask of Madness, he ran into a lane, grabbed someone, ran him back with the Force Staff there, and, and all of a sudden that target is miles away from his team. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. It's it's the the huge huge downside is that Batrider not great survivability yeah. and Mask of Madness makes it thirty percent worse. But yeah. other than that, I love it. I love the idea. It's nice. We need, we don't see enough Mask of Madnesses. To be fair, oh well. Um, some chat going on. You can actually read that, right? Yeah. What does he say? What are you Belarusians? And then he said, uh, "Are like." Uh, like manager or like landlord broke Dota today. Okay. That's that's all I said. That's not really funny. Was he? I mean, he was I didn't say it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't promise you that it would be amusing. Uh, it looks like yeah. I mean, they're just rebooting basically. Yeah. Clearly, no SSD. Everybody needs a solid state drive. For some I agree. Dota I was, I was, you know, I had some issues with my ISP, which again, apparently today seems fixed for now, which is Good. great. Uh, which is actually a fix that I did myself because I got a new router again, second router that I try out. But oh, wow. um, like, I was on the phone yesterday for an hour about it, and I, and at some point he asked me to reboot my PC. And I was like, okay. Right. And and he wanted to check something in the meantime, and I have SSD, so you know, right. he's just rebooting, and I'm, boop, I was back up. So I just continued doing stuff afterwards, like checking out stuff, and he's like, yeah, you, you still have to reboot your PC, right? Yeah, I just did. Oh. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> really That's cool. funny. Yeah, no, and SSD is definitely it's the future. Yes. But it's still really expensive to get it in. Yeah, I've got hybrids now too, though. Parts and yeah, you do. That's true. In Russia, computer parts are actually really expensive, though. Um, or at least they were the last time I was there. So it's kind of a pain upgrading your computer in Russia. Oh, I had I when I was still selling computer parts, Russia was actually a pretty tough market to get into because everything was already pretty cheap. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. It's probably changed. I haven't been to Russia in a very long time, so it's probably completely changed. And Bulgaria was was the furthest I could go. Interesting. Yeah. You sell computer parts? Yes. Like door to like uh no no like, by, uh, by thousands and, by... and hundreds and such to, okay to people right. that either build computers normally or oh, just sell them on to stores. Oh. Were you like hired by like an online vendor or like what was the? Uh, no, we were sitting in an office in The Hague. Huh. Cool. Four people. Right. Governing the world needs of right. computer parts. We're just buying and then putting twenty five cents on it and then selling it again. <laughs> twenty five cents. That is a well, sometimes, margin. well, for for memory, it was actually pretty decent. Right. But yeah, for CPUs, you obviously put a bit more on it. Yeah, I was gonna HDDs say. HDDs as well. SSDs, a uh, whole lot more actually. SSD market was really, really Diego, Diego, wait. <laughs> Don't do that. So I got a new, I got a new router. It came with a box. <laughs> uh huh. Good. Yeah. Oh, so he's playing with the box. He is sitting in the box right now. <laughs> I was kind of worried that he was gonna try to pee in it, maybe. Oh. He also likes that for boxes, but right now he's just trying to find a way to sit in it, which is not really possible, because <laughs> there's still carbon in the box. Awkward. I guess it's standing in the sun. Sorry, we're totally getting off track because we're still well, waiting off for. Track from what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no, game. there's no game for now. We're still waiting. I mean, I so we had the poll results. It was about fifty-fifty, or very close to it. Okay. And honestly, I think that's about right. Yes. Um, Empire, they have the probably the three most talented players out of the ten in this game, but they have 40% stand-ins, and that's always like a difficult situation, and it's weird with Empire, like, watching them this season, there's periodic glimmers of that incredible level of talent and execution, but a lot of the time it's just sort of mired in, like, I, I feel like they're still not communicating that well across the team. Yeah, and, and I mean, large part of that is just the lack of captain. Yeah, that is such that is such an important thing to have, and and we know that of like for example for Cupad with the, what Mini said that he tried to take up that role but it just didn't it didn't work out in the end. But that was also something that we saw in their gameplay. Cupad they sometimes were ahead, and then they didn't take advantage of it, or they thought they were ahead and then overextended and died and threw yeah. if you were, uh, if you will. And I mean, 
knowing when you can and cannot go, that's an art in itself. You need to have a captain that can tell you that. Because you, you ha don't have the time to pay attention to everything at the same time. You have to have one that can do that and then can can maybe give the calls when you go in and when you can't. Absolutely. Just to get those those feelings if you are ahead or behind. Because sometimes if your lane is going well, you're thinking like, you know, we're doing awesome. But in the meantime, your, your mid lane could be completely lost, even if there's not kills going on. I mean, you uh, yeah, need you're someone totally right. to have that. And we do have the go again, so that's great. Finally yep. having a game, the reconnect was in there, so no it swap. goes. No swap. Yep. Ooh, interesting. No swap on either team. So, for what it's worth, we're going to get some pretty experimental uh, lane assignments and roles here. So it'll be interesting, at the very least. Z-Rage going to go for a first blood. I think they... Hmm. They could probably get one. I think they're favored in an early clash. Yeah, disruption and Magic Missile already so strong. Refraction on Ink Visitor picked up first one already very strong as well. So that's very strong level 1 abilities. Well, for Empire, their main level 1 ability might be a Silence from Skyrath Mage. Bounty Hunter maybe picks up Janata if he does that because otherwise he doesn't really have that much. Actually, he gets scouted out right now. One Disruption could mean the end of him. Disruption already picked up. One here already lands, but Empire is able to get themselves away. Impale, though. Very strong level 1 Maybe ability. they should have... Maybe they should have tried to lead with the arrow and see if the arrow... Once they saw Bounty Hunter, I think their only shot at still getting the first blood was a long-range arrow land. So uh, they could have maybe tried skilling that, but I guess they won't. And they'll just go to their lanes. The battle begins. True. They will just move on. We're, we're going to see an aggressive trial by the looks of it, so... Um, we already introduced all the players, I guess, before the pause. But the, yeah, the aggressive trial will be here with the Mirana, with Avenge. So Sharfik as well as Android, and also of course the Medfed on the on the Shadow Demon, and then we have a safe lane Bed Rider. So I really like this. Of course, Bed Riders can farm very fast in the jungle, but if they get a lane to be on, they farm even faster, and that will mean a very aggressive Bed Rider in the mid game. And that's something that Z Rage really needs because they need to counter the aggression that comes up from Empire that needs to have kills because they got a bet uh, they got a bounty hunter in the game. Right, precisely, Empire. Both teams under, I think, under a bit of pressure to perform early. Try to get that lane win. There we actually yeah. have the beginning. Yeah, like oh, Scandal nice giving himself for, up for the arrow. Gets a magic missile as well, though. Might be slightly overextended. A couple more hits needed. Can they get the damage on one more hit? No! The self was in time. Android, he might be the one to overextend in the meantime. 100 HP, the impale goes on Medfet. The first blood will happen here, and that is going to be Riku taking it. Riku leaving on 7 HP. And that is the aggressive trial lane for Z-Rage. Not getting first blood, but they were so close. Twice in a row. They not were very, it. very close, absolutely. Uh, but in the end, I mean, Empire, the first blood secured. Gyrocopter doesn't really participate in that much. I think he was in range to get the AoE gold mix piece. So that is a good start for them. And TA, you can see, already being bullied a little bit in the mid as well. It's interesting that they're running their usual number one player in that mid role. For both. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable playing Mirana? I don't know. But for yeah, both. for both, that's true. That's a good point. For both Blow Your Brain and Ink Visitor are normally the carry players, so it's kind of interesting to see how they do here. Blow Your Brain indeed getting the better of that 5-2 to two in last, it's 4-2 to two in Templar Assassin, so it is not that big difference yet in terms of lasses, but you already see the control going to blow your brain off the lane. In the meantime, the Bed Rider is uh, stacking up some sticky napalms. He didn't bring sentries, he did bring dust though, so if he thinks he's close, he can go in for the kill. That's true. He can definitely Bat Rider somewhat favored in this lane, but unless he can kill the Bounty Hunter, the Bounty Hunter will find levels. And that's all that matters for Bounty Hunter, basically. Fast level 6. That's all that that comes down to. Yeah, we have got Riku. He was the one that got the first blood. He's still got 600 gold in his bag. Hasn't upgraded the career. Uh, just upgrades the career. I was gonna say, because normally you see that straight away when a support picks up that first blood. But the courier still ended up being upgraded, so that is nice for him. As he has Easy. got 200 gold left yeah. after picking up a magic stick. Which is always something that you want to have in an aggressive trialing situation. Because you know that your opponent is gonna throw spells at you. Right. And so far I would say that this aggressive try... It's actually been somewhat successful, even with the missed first blood, if only because Scandal is like three for three. So that's very bad last hitting for this gyrocopter. He has next to no farm here, substantially less than the Marana has been able to earn, actually. And meanwhile, I mean, the Bat Rider is okay. He'll hit a fine blink dagger timing if nobody punishes him, and the TA is doing okay as well. Yeah, the only downside for this aggressive challenge is that first blood. Yeah. But if they can continue to shut Scandal down. 
they'll actually be in a good situation as well. They don't need kills, they just need to shut Scandal down, and that's that's working so far. And imagine like Shadow Demon being level 2, and they can actually try to go for a bit more aggressive, perhaps. Wave of Terror is already there upon Android, so that will also make a difference for the next time they go. And the, the situation is still pretty scary here for for Empire. Uh, Sunlight is actually trying to harass him away, but he did pick up that, that pointed ancient seal, so he will be able to silence someone if they decide to go. He can silence up on... That's a kill. I just got back in time just for the kill. Blow Your Brain, he jumped himself forward with the scream. Gets himself the kill on the mid lane. That's the mid lane going the way of Empire for sure. Now guaranteed. Yeah. Even though, nice uh, kill. Yeah. Very nice uh, kill. Inquisitor probably should have tried to kite him around the mid rather than... Uh, you can juke into the trees here, southeast of the tier 1 tower, to try to break line of sight, and then uh, just keep the tower hitting Queen of Pain. So that might have at least gotten a trade. But instead, yeah, it's another kill for Empire. They do need to win some lanes, so mid might as well be that lane since it doesn't look like they're going to win top convincingly. You can see that they actually haven't felt comfortable pulling the lane until just now. They've spent so much time with both of these supports in the lane. So they haven't had time to earn that XP advantage. Now they'll earn a little bit of one at least. Dyer's top yeah, and of course also the uh, the counter ward was there was done as well. Th with that though, they are allowing Zerage maybe to to go for a dive. Not right now, but the next time they'll do it, it will allow for a dive for Zerage if they want to do it, if they want to do it if they think they're confident enough. If they know that Queen of Pain won't TP in actually, because she just picked up a TP scroll still in their stash, but we'll pick it up shortly. He's got that double damage tune. If the refraction goes off, there will be a lot of damage going through to that TA who is, without the refraction, actually pretty squishy. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a kill coming out just yet, but you can see Empire feeling confident enough now in this tri lane to actually do these multi jungle pulls, and this is going to punish Z Rage heavily. It's going to starve them of XP. Yeah. In the meantime, Light of Heaven is still getting level, so he's almost level six. When he is that, we might see him rotating top as well. They might try to go aggressive. Talking about going aggressive, Inquisitor actually yep. going a bit aggressive <laughs> up on Blow Your Brain, but no results yet. And the bottle is of course still there up on Blow Your Brain as well. Full bottle yep. still, but Inquisitor though. Yeah, I think Inquisitor's doing okay even with that one death. I'm interested that Hakan decided not to go any more aggressive on Light of Heaven than he did. Maybe just not feeling confident that he could get that win. Ends up not even using any dust and uh, really just letting Light of Heaven now hit level 6 at 6 minutes. For an offlane bounty hunter, this will Empire will be very happy with this. Yeah, for sure. And he has picked up levels in Shurkantos because he is doing so well. He can do that. He can. Uh, he can just go for that. It's it's a bit more mana intensive. But if you're thinking you're doing fine, you might as well because you're gonna get ahead anyway. We might see him going for it now. There is a lasso up. The track goes up as well though, and look at the harassment that Light of Heaven can just throw out. He still has a level 3 Shuriken Toss, actually no mana for it anymore. Still has 10 stick charges. TP actually comes in. Nyx Assassin it is, only level 3 though, so no Vendetta there, but the Impale would be very nice. And you can of course set that Impale up with the, uh, with the Janata still hitting. Actually the Dust pops, he baits it out, but here comes uh -oh. the Impale, and they're gonna turn it around, and that will be a track kill! Go in the way of Empire! Light of Heaven still taking a lot of damage, but not enough to go down for, and that is him still with self, still with Tango, and now with the track kill under his belt as well. That hero laugh, just uh, that cackle, because the hero and the player, I think, are very satisfied with themselves, completely baiting the Batrider. Smart play by uh, Riku, actually, sitting out of vision range, so even though he didn't have Vendetta, it ended up just completely successfully baiting Hakan, so... Now level 8 Bounty Hunter, this is very scary if you're a Z-Rage. You, now your TA is in trouble because the Bounty Hunter can rotate over and help the Queen of Pain. Even your tri -Lane could get picked apart with an untimely entry of the Bounty Hunter into the picture. Yeah, for sure. Sorry for cat sounds, that might happen. Seems to be wanting attention. But, uh, but yeah, will they agree? And the ag aggressive trailer for Z-Rage... Not really working out. 23 for 6 on Sharfik. And since the, the gyro has been a bit more aggressive, a bit more confident, as you call it, I mean, 21 for 5 for him, so they're not really yep. shutting him down anymore either. Even though, I mean, some of those are jungle creeps. But he also took big camp, so it kind of yeah. evens out a bit as well. They didn't ever take the small camp there, so we can't really say anything about that, apart from he is actually doing really well for being up against an aggressive trial and Z Rage mm -hmm. just not doing that well. And it supports level 3 still. Yeah. Well, the supports of Empire. Level five and level five, four rather. Yeah, the for the Nyx assassin participating in that bat rider kill was huge for some early XP. And now, yeah, I think they have convincing control of this lane. 
Uh, Scandal, his GPM is comparable, actually a little better than Sharfix at this point. So this Marana, not going to get that big that quickly, especially relative to the Gyrocopter. And meanwhile, Queen of Pain Bounty Hunter, at any point they could just start roaming and try to get kills. Right now they don't really have food at the top, but if I was TA, I would be very scared. Yep, and imagine if the next Assassin gets level 6, because he is he is getting experience a lot faster than those supports, of course. He already gets the Impale up on uh, the Shadow Demon. Medved should use the disruption soon because I know it's too late. He dies. Sonic Wave, Android, last on a life around this trial lane. Gonna be trying to dodge it, but they will. Oh, he thought it would get that a kill, but the stick charge is just in time. And actually, Android thinks, wait, I didn't get him? Okay, he'll go in back in. Jumps forward, Radiance didn't get him. Still. Quite a shame, but gets two kills. In the meantime, Bounty Hunter does go down the bottom lane. Last two was used for that. Akon very low on life, but is able to get away. Yeah. Nice kills picked up for Empire. Finally, Z Ridge get on the board by getting Bounty Hunter, but still, again, these teams are under pressure to perform early, to get kills early on, and Empire right now doing a vastly better job. And Blow Your Brain is going to get scary quickly. He could go for something like. I would still say Fast Orchid's going to be great in this game, if if only for Batrider. It's it's a very useful item, just in general. Yeah. And, I mean, you'd expect the Templar Assassin to maybe do some more here, then. Expect the Templar Assassin to to go create some space for Marana to do things, or go yeah. create space to actually win an aggressive trial lane, but she's been sticking mid. She, of course, died once already. She now picked up her magic wand and has got treads. Other than that, not really that much, but she is sitting here yeah do you think it's the right choice no I, I actually agree with you that he should be trying to generate more opportunities the thing is I think this is what happens when you put your your number one your conservative safe number one player in that mid Templar assassin I think he just doesn't feel quite as comfortable roaming and ganking he's like oh but I need items well you kind of don't you, you can still generate kills even without items on Templar assassin yeah. it's just he doesn't feel personally comfortable doing it yeah, well, Blow Your Brain doesn't seem to have that problem. No, as but I mean... already jumping that, around. <laughs> that's how he plays carries, too, though. Yes. It actually looks like he'll go Ags. Uh, so that's an interesting choice. Definitely will give him a lot more AoE ability to pop those supports quickly. And it's also a farming tool for Queen of Pain. It's very, very good for her farm. Yeah, and we see Moran. I mean, Moonlight Shadow might be able to help out some on this top lane, but there's already two Sentry Wars up, which, of course, replaced the counter wards and counter wards from uh, from Z-Rage, but that's a pretty pretty good ward placement also to just scout out any kind of Moonlight Shadow it being is. used to initiate oh, no. here on this top lane because they don't give up. That Like normally if an aggressive trailer doesn't work out, fine. We'll rotate. We'll get the Mirana on the safe lane to get some extra right. farm. We'll get the Bat Rider to go into the jungle. We'll just abandon that top lane altogether. But they stick around. Yeah, and the Bat Rider actually is in the jungle, which does, yeah, I agree. It raises the question of why the Marana can't just get free XP again farm up against the Bounty Hunter. Because, of course, they are giving Bounty Hunter basically free farm now. He has his Sage's Mask, so I think this is going to be a quick medallion for him. And that gives them the ability to kill this Ventral Spirit slash Shadow Demon extremely quickly. Yep. They, they, I'm still waiting for something. Oh, they hit, <laughs> hit an arrow to get the creep. Very nicely done for Sharfik. If he aimed for that, actually. He didn't have vision there, so it was a blind arrow. Oh, actually, he did. Blind, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't have vision. Radiant's the sentry ward wasn't scouting anything out. Attack. Actually, that's the sentry ward of Z Rage. What am I saying? More sentry ward here also, by uh, by Empire, just to make sure that that Moonlight Shadow is no problem. Oh, Medfet already getting the slow there, and the scream, and the Sonic Wave. There you go. That's no disruption on the board anymore. As that is also a level six for Rick, who gets a last two here. It is Hakon that came in, but the Spike Carapace. It is countering that Bat Rider pretty solidly. Even though it still picks up the supports in the end, the Mirana dead, and it looks like Ink Visitor, oh, he might be able to get something more. Scandal taking a lot of damage. Scandal will be dropping here. Ink Visitor with a double kill, and Akon gets himself away alive in the end. I don't think it was a bad trade for Z-Rage at all. Double it kill ends up for being okay. Yeah. Once once they got the gyrocopter, Radiant's it was a lot salvaged from it. And that's Scandal playing like a mid on this gyrocopter. <laughs> Diving really deep to try to get that Batrider. Really no chance considering the geometry of this area on the map is actually the most favorable geometry for Batrider on the map because he can uh, go to completely unassailable ground in the west and it's extremely difficult to chase him around this shop. So really, he was safe guaranteed and it was unnecessary for Scandal to dive as deep as he did. Still, it's only one death. It's not, not that bad. 
Oh, in the meantime, of course, Heikon, he came in with a blink tag. I was a surprise for Empire. I didn't see that before. Two and a half, uh, just under two and a half minute faster blink dagger than wow, the average as Ink Visitor goes down. That was a mystic flare. That burns away refraction charges real fast. No hope for him as he gets uh, stunned under the mystic flare. That's a level six supports, by the way. Level seven supports, rather, with level four still up on the vengeful. A level five up on the shadow fiend, a uh, shadow yeah. demon rather. That's tough. And in the meantime, light of heaven level ten, and he can get a kill here very easily up on Sharfik with the shuriken toss helping out. The leap being very short range and actually, just a scream from Blurry Vein coming in to help out, and that's yeah, Mirana dead. At this point, it's exactly what you said. The fact that they didn't give up that aggressive trilin and got punched so heavily becomes a problem when Mirana is level six. He is lower level than both supports of Empire. And Nyx is a support who you never, ever, ever want to give levels, because that Vendetta will screw you up so badly if you're behind on levels relative to the Nyx Assassin. This is, Zeraj are in extremely dangerous waters here, frankly. Yeah, the killing potential, the, the, the ganking potential for Empire, very high, and better yet, they have a lineup with a Bounty Hunter that they actually get paid more if they get successful ganks, but of course that track helping out there. So you have got your Nyx Assassin with a Vendetta, Bounty Hunter chasing you down. And that's two people that can be behind your back without you even knowing it. There's and instantly. And there could be, uh, there could be Queen of Pain blinking in as well as Queen of Pain with a double Devershoon. Apparently a very scary sight as Akon goes down here on this bottom lane. And this should be a, a uh, tier one tower down. Tier this one. is actually yeah. the first tier one going down in the map. Yep. Empire have been diving beyond towers quite a bit, but here they just take it. It's a good kill. Uh, it looks like probably Z Ridge gets the trade here. I can't imagine Empire uses their fortification. Okay, just to deny, I guess. They're gonna try to deny it. Yeah, Aghanim is now completed up on Blow Your Brain Scan. Uh, Blow Your Brain's Queen of Pain. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> Very scary. Against 655, like, they just have a chance to run away with this game completely because of the low HP and low levels of Z Ridge's heroes. Yeah, and even though TA and Bedrider are both level 11 and they are on par with the other two solos of Empire... They can't can, 2v5. They can't 2v5, and can they actually do enough to just stop Empire from going in? And better yet, with their gank potential, they should be the ones to try and also get ex the experience up on those supports to, to help gain, set up ganks with those supports, but they're just in no position to do that. We actually have Ink Visitor building a more sturdy build, so going for a BKB rather than going aggressive. Which is, I think they should be aggressive. There goes the last two hits up on Blow Your Brain, but there's no damage to go through. The sun is still there, but Blow Your Brain will just be able to blink away on half HP still, and has got all of his bottle charges still left there as well. Here comes an arrow, looking for a target, won't be able to. Of course, Murano should have been there when that last two actually hit. Oh, Mystic Flare disruption just in time. Sharpie taking a lot of damage. Sonic Wave will clear them both out. And that's a double kill for Blow Your Brain, the slow and the Shuriken Toss still up on Android. Here comes Hakon again though, but that's a triple kill already for Blow Your Brain. Jumping forward with the scream. Yeah. And Ink Visitor getting a bit of harassment from Light of Heaven. Oh, Blow Your Brain, he wants an Ultra, but this might have been a bit too much for him even. And he ends up dropping still indeed, with Hakon getting a kill. That was just a bit too trigger happy there. That last, that, yeah, that last blink was way too cocky. But, you know, I mean, at this point he can kind of afford to. They're just... They're running Z Rage Ragged and killing the same three heroes every time, which keeps those heroes from participating at all. Look at the item loadout of Android P and Medved. They have boots, and that's it, basically. Sharfik has some items, yeah, but not that much better. They got sentry wards. Okay, they have sentry wards. And that's yeah, Sharfik almost got his Nyx. drums ready, and oh, sentry ward also for Android. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. I mean, they also died, of course, quite a few times, but just not having the swap. We saw games yesterday that that swap is just very important to set all these things up. Oh, they are going to be finding Scandal. Disruption will be there. Soulcatcher as well. They should be able to find him fairly, a kill him fairly easily. Indeed, they do. But here comes Blow Your Brain. That's one support down at Rain. Can they find another? Blow Your Brain going for Sharfik. Actually trying to bait out the leap. Android has got that disable again. Has got that magic missile. But Blow Your Brain jumps himself into the trees because he likes to sit in trees. He still wants to kill. He, oh, he jumps forward again. He does have some mana left. Arrow though hits. Blow Your Brain. He still can blink away. He's got level 4 blink. Yeah. So that's really helping him out a lot right now. But of course, he's level 12, so why shouldn't he have level no 4 problem. blink? As we have Templar Assassin going down in the bottom lane. That's a track that will go in the way of Light of Heaven. Vendetta. Yeah, started off with the Vendetta, put the track on, and that's not where their sentries are. Their sentries are all tied up in the top, fighting Blow Your Brain. Uh, Empire just making too many arguments for Z-Rage to be able to refute. And this TA 
not even really at BKB timing yet. Maybe in three more minutes he'll get that BKB, and I'm not sure if that'll change the game that much. It'll change it a little bit, um, but the the gyro, the bounty hunter, and eventually the queen of pain will just because of levels will be scary. Yeah, and I mean that that same situation that that was happening just on the bottom lane can happen again. BKB won't Maybe save you from tower. from the damage and. Attack. You're not going to be able to turn it on in time. Maybe you're going to be able to, to to TP out in time before the damage is too much, but it Maybe. still will be will be very tough indeed. I mean, mm. yeah, there is a gem now up on Hakon, so they try to get some extra map control going, which is great to get some extra farm up, but we see them e sitting all together, so map control or not, they're not using what they can get right now. And of course, I mean, it's very tough to try and find a place to farm where you know that there is a vendetta and a bounty hunter on the map. Exactly. It's it's very, very scary. They don't have much in the way of Observer Wards right now. Like, they, they really only have vision of their own Ancients. So, <laughs> Empire is still constricting them very heavily. Possibly getting a kill on Android. Yeah, oh, know. Blinken last two gets below your brain. You might be able to do something here. Melt damage going through as well as the Magic Missile, but the Mystic Flare is going to be there. Android running himself away from that. Still alive. Flame Rake. Riku gets killed off. That's another kill going the way of Z-Rage. Sonic Wave in the meantime didn't end up killing off anybody and blow your brain. Ends up going down, and they might be able to get someone else as well. Light of Heaven getting scouted out with a Gem of Crusa trying to run from this, won't be able to. Or might be Sunlight trying to run as well in the wrong way though. That's not where his base is, and this is a great fight for Z-Rage. Sunlight still able to TP out, but he was the only one. And of course Gyrocopter wasn't there to begin with, but that's four people dead on the side of Empire. And they get a buyback for Queen of Pain. He did pick up a kill, so that defrays the cost of the buyback a little bit, but definitely a nice fight for Z-Rage. That gem already doing a lot of work shortly after picking it up, and... Hakan, definitely the, the bright spot for their team so far. 4-2-4 four, four on this Batrider. He's keeping up on levels. He's doing pretty well. Yeah, and one thing that is interesting to note is that the Gyrocopter actually picked up a Shadow Blade, while his team already has got two Invis heroes. <laughs> So I'm not quite sure what he thinks he can do with it, but, you know, it's pretty nice for him to get extra damage maybe when he gets out. Maybe as initiation too, if the Bat Rider isn't around. Normally, in, in theory, Bat Riders stand pretty far back so that they can blink in and get themselves someone out of position. But, mm. yeah, it is it is interesting to see that. And they do, of course, in the end, Empire, they do lose a lot of heroes, but they get a tier 2 tower in return on their gyrocopter. Pretty solid as well to have that. Yeah. I mean, Gyrocopter, I agree the Shadow Blade a little bit questionable. It's more damage. It's it's damage has actually nerfed this patch. Eight less damage than it used to have. And like you said, there's already two invisible heroes and a, and a gem on the other side. I actually think that this Shadow Blade pickup is fairly questionable. I wouldn't have minded this being the Gyrocopter BKB rush game. They actually pick off Light again, so that gem, again, the gem has completely given a new lease on life to Z-Rage this game. Yeah, they are able to pick him up. They're using four heroes to do it though, leaving again the gyro to free farm on the top lane. In the meantime, he's got 2k gold. Shadow Blade or not, he is still doing pretty well for himself. With Ink Visitor, the only one that's really doing well in terms of Radiant's net worth and carry potential for Z Rage. I mean, you can't really expect the Marana to start carrying anytime soon because she, she really got nothing. And she actually, something that we don't normally see, she skipped Moonlight Shadow completely. Because we don't see that because it got buffed. It is way less mana cost. It's actually very good as an escape mechanism. And yes, you've got a track there. But it can't be up on everybody all the time. So you still That's can true. allow some people to escape, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know about or the initiate. Moonlight Shadow skipping. It's a pretty good ability now. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the other team has detection, it's not bad. Yeah, you can initiate with it pretty securely. And, and like, I think Empire is relying more on the track than on, on, on Sentry Wards Radiant's right now. Radiant. They don't have yeah. Sentry Wards on the map. And... If you try to initiate with that Moonlight Shadow, the track won't be there, so you get that element of surprise, and you might be able to win a team fight with that. But uh, not able to do it now, as uh, we have Maybe he'll get at level 10. Yeah, I hope so for him. I think I think it's just that because he was so behind on levels on this Mirana, I mean, still, he's only tied with the supports of the other team. He felt that any points in Moonlight Shadow, points away from his active damage abilities, would just set him even further back. Like, Mirana is a large portion of this team's Dyer's damage. It's just Mirana and TA that really pro provide the auto attack damage. So he needs to be effective in that respect or they just won't have anything to do. Like, okay, you get the element of surprise, but the element Dyer's of surprise doesn't tower matter tower if you can't fallen. actually use it to do something. So maybe that's his logic. Yeah, in the meantime, tier one tower taking top, Z-Rage. Giving up some damage for the tier two mid though. 
Because that is where Empire was. They were trying to hunt something or trying to take a fight mid. And now we'll rotate bottom and we'll try to see if they can take a tier 2 or a fight here as well. Looks like Mantis style next for Scandal. So this is a good item. It'll give him a little bit more speed, farmability. Between Mantis style and Shadow Blade, he'll actually zoom around the map pretty quickly when he's in that, that stealth shadow walk form. So uh, it's a good pickup. Not an extremely common item progression right now, just because there's no BKB in it. But maybe he feels the BKB just isn't that important against the Sea Rage team, which I can't really argue with. A lot of their damage is either, I mean, Lasso, which BKB doesn't matter, and Auto. Yeah, we actually see everybody of Empire backing out of the Radiant Jungle, realizing that Invisitor wouldn't have been there by herself. She actually got a BKB ready. Level 14, only one that's, uh, well, one of the two that's really keeping up with the levels of Empire themselves. Level 13 on the Bat Rider, of course, is pretty decent as well, who is building towards his four staff. But the levels on, on the rest, they still they, they still have a tough time catching up. There's a level 7 up on the Venge, there's a level 8 up on the Shadow Demon. And, I mean, they're getting their ultis up, which is great. But in the meantime, the supports of the enemy team are only two levels away from the level 2 ultis. And we've already seen what that Mystic Flare can do. And it will be only worse later yeah, on. When stunned, that Mystic Flare will just peel the refraction in. In really a fraction of a second, as K-pop pointed out earlier, it deals damage every 0 0.1 seconds. So... For six refraction charges, that's about half a second. By yeah. refraction. <laughs> Indeed. And we do have to go again after a short pause. Let's see if Z-Rage... They probably want to take down the tier 1 tower on the side of Empire. They they are, right now, they're two towers behind. If they would take that tier 1, and they gain a little map control, and they would be one tower closer to being even in terms of towers. They are far away of being even in terms of gold, though. They are 10k gold behind compared to Empire with the experience graph maybe a bit more friendly as we see some tracks going on Empire do they really want to fight this is the question Bad Rider in the meantime sitting in behind but the ping already came out so they know that he is there and they are already backing off and being extra careful Shadow Blade activated and Bad Rider backs off tower still living I think Empire want to chase yeah they have the tracks on but they have to be careful because Bad Rider from behind will still be there Shuriken tosses Mad Fat, cooldown coming down, last two is there as well, but there's a Mystic Flare, it is Akon that can't do anything anymore, he's being chased down, he'll go down together with the Vengeful Spirit, as the screen will make sure that there's no TP him. hope, and that is the only one living alive on the side of Z-Rager, only one alive, it is uh, Miran, actually oh. I say the only one, because here comes Blur Brain, here comes an arrow, dodge the arrow, there's gotta be another blink up in one second, that should be a blink and a scream, and a kill, that's a kill. It's interesting. Uh, because you can't destroy gem anymore, there's actually now a gem sitting on the ground. They're going to use the courier to pick it up. <laughs> That's funny. One was taken by Skyrath, so he recovered one gem. You now see it in the fountain. And now here's the second gem coming back. And this is actually more than anything else that happened in that fight. Losing the gem is actually the worst thing for Z-Rage. Uh, they won't. That was giving them kills. Yep. That was. That was the only thing that was really working for them, was that ability to use the gem to spot out Bounty Hunter and catch him. But instead, that fight going extremely poorly. You can see Light of Heaven now transitioning into actually, like, uh, usually you see Bounty Hunter played as this sort of pseudo support, just a track bot. So he started with that build, with the Vladimir's offering. But now you see him segueing into Yasha. So that means that he's confident that he can actually provide damage to this game. Yeah, being a bit of a semi-carry there. And Empire, I mean, they knew Lincoln's that Bedrider was behind there, I think. Mm -hmm. And they totally had a disjointed team fight that they could take, and <laughs> and I think like Moonlight Shadow there, even though of course there was a gem up on Empire still yep. uh, before uh, before the Nyx Assassin died. There was. I think Moonlight Shadow would have helped them scatter a bit more. I yeah, I actually agree. I think Moonlight Shadow would definitely have been a, a good pickup by now by level ten. Interesting Empire stacking Lincolns. So at this point, they feel that the only thing that can stop them is really bad lassos that just completely put them out of their comfort zone. Keep in mind, uh, Hakan is pretty close to his four staff. But here we go. Two Lincolns, as I just said, both up on their core heroes. And that makes lasso far less of a factor. Yep. Vendetta scouting things out. There's a sentry ward right there, though. But they don't care. They don't care whatsoever. Venge already down. Akon goes down as well. Visitor sitting in his BKB, but he doesn't do enough damage as his teammates drop around him. We have Medved dropping still on the side of Z Rage. And indeed, the last one is Ink Visitor. He is trying to run. Won't be able to. That's another team wipe. Two team wipes in the span of a couple of minutes. Yeah. This, this is, is going from bad to worse. 
for it's Z-Rage. brutal. Radiant the Empire are just brutalizing Z-Rage. And the, the BKB for TA has actually done a lot. Like, he's stayed alive really long. But yeah, he alone cannot do damage. And Marana's not doing any damage. Oh, she just dies. And now picked up... No, never mind. She didn't pick Radiant up Moonlight Shadow. Yeah. Wrong lady that I clicked on. But no, she's she doesn't have anything. She's got drums and treads. Radiant's Period. Tower has fallen. Yeah. It's the, the aggressive trailing that they stuck with for a very long time with no particular success at any point. The only thing they managed to do was keep Gyro from farming for the first three-ish minutes, but Scandal now is absolutely fine farm. I mean, Sh Shadowblade Lincoln Sphere, which is quite unusual, but in this case, I mean, it just it renders them impervious to Z-Rage's only options. And the damage for Z-Rage only comes from Templar Assassin, and even that, because he went BKB first, is pretty low. Yeah. And this will be a Rosha for Empire. They're still quite careful, Empire, I think. I mean, they just took two team wipes and all they got was all the outer towers. And I mean, that should be on a t-shirt by the way that I said that. But oh well, they take Roshan with it as well. Maybe with this they will go up the high ground, but I'm actually thinking that maybe they'll continue farming a bit longer and just wait until they catch out someone out of control again, because Z-Rage is the one that is actually should be looking for action. They're doing it again. They have smoked up. Yeah. And they are it's... gonna go top. We have got Blow Your Brain hanging around there on the screen of pain. Yeah, it's desperation smokes at this point for Z-Rage. They're so far behind and they can just feel the game completely slipping away. Those last two team fights, both of which Light of Heaven was completely alive for dropping tracks on players. That just, I mean, if you look at the gold graph, it kinks out so hard around, uh, around those two team fights. Like you have 24 minutes, it's still about 10k for Empire. Now it's 25k. It's just, it, that's five big items. That's basically your two Lincoln Spheres. Obviously, they picked up that Aegis from the Rashawn kill. Queen of Pain moving towards Scythe of Ice pretty quickly. It's a Bounty Hunter with this Manta style. This is what happens when you're ahead on Bounty Hunter. All of a sudden, all of your players have items, and the other team's like, wait, what happened? Yeah, and it means that Queen of Pain, I, I really like this. Blow Your Brain actually ran forward into five enemy heroes, making Z-Rage believe that he wasn't alone. <laughs> right. So they all back off from just one Queen of Pain. In the meantime, Empire was sitting also smoked up on the bottom lane, but nobody came there, obviously, so... Fights avoided on, uh, avoided on both sides. The Scandal's got 3,800 gold and picked himself up the start of a butterfly. So there's the Eagle Horn, and that will be... Uh, that will be uh, Eagle Song, rather. That will be the start of the butterfly for him, and it's... It's getting out of control, if it's not already. For Z-Rage. Ooh, I would say it's already out of control. <laughs> But certainly I agree with you. Empire, it's reminiscent of the last game that Z-Rage played, right? Where they have one person with decent farm, Inquisitor, and they're facing down three players all with the same amount of far higher farm. So Light of Heaven, Scandal, and Blow Your Brain, the three core players of Empire, all having all of the items they could want and more with the Aegis on Gyrocopter. Still with about three minutes? No, sorry, four minutes of life on it. Yep. There they go. Up the high ground with them. They've got everything they want. Lincolns, Manta Styles, and Ghost Scepters as well. So you're even at... Oh, nice an arrow. arrow. Scandal taking a lot of damage there. We'll actually have that Aegis being burned. A lasso hits up on Sunlight. So no silence there, but he has a Ghost Scepter. Sonic Waves to hit up on Android, who's getting forced back there. It is Ink Visitor that will be the one to go down together with Hakon. And right now, it is just cleaning off those supports as the Venge and... The Shadow Demon just go down real fast. Marana yep. is still alive. Ink Visitor bought back. But those two by themselves can't really do anything to stop that as Ink Visitor gonna get slow, track, Mystic Flared, and killed off. Yeah. It's the levels. It's almost more than the items, it's the levels. Like, it's 600 damage on the Sonic Wave every 40 seconds. On level 8. Vengeful Spirit and a level 9 Shadow Demon, they can't possibly survive. There's just far too much damage being thrown at them by Empire. And in the end, it doesn't matter how big the TA is. I mean, in this case, not big enough. But even if he had more items, it's an issue where the tri -lane fell apart too hard and they stayed with it too long yep. to actually adapt to what was being thrown at them by Empire. Yep, and the GG's are cold. We're waiting for everybody to disconnect because we're going to have another game. This game will, favor, will feature two new teams. We'll see TCM and Power Rangers. After that, Empire will be seen again against Power Rangers. So this is a great win for Empire, by the way, because this, these wins, they really need them. As said at the start, they need them to keep their hope alive of not getting dropped out 
of Star Series and drop down to Pro Series, or after even playing regulation matches in Pro Series. And I mean, that's like that's no big, make no small thing. So Empire, really important win. Z Rage though, losing here two games today. And that is actually pretty troublesome for them because they now have five losses in Star Series, and they kind of need uh, you know a couple of more wins because he, maybe they are then the ones to go for playing regulation matches, and they don't want that sure. either. <laughs> they definitely don't. We're waiting for Hakon to uh, disconnect us. Indeed, that was also the call from the uh, from the admin, admins slash uh, caster as inmate is casting together with Villa. So uh, let's just waiting for the throw to drop. We are and again. Radiance like clockwork. Is it is 1800 CEST time. <laughs> they yeah. keep ending on the hour. Delayed or not, they're just making the game shorter if it's delayed. But yeah, we are going to see TCM versus Power Rangers in the next matchup for Starlight of Season 6. Radiance it is, of course, day number 22. We are having a total of 27 days for the group stages, and then the land finals will be in the weekend of the 6th of July. For now, though, for now, we are still in the group stages, and we are still seeing which lucky teams will be going on to Kiev, as there's already, of course, one team guaranteed a slot in Kiev, which is Virtus Pro, who secured that yesterday with the match. And uh, we'll see if there are some teams that can still keep their dream alive, or if everybody's dreams today are getting shattered, because uh, today is a team of the uh, Middle League, basically, the Middle League for all the scores in terms of uh, Star Ladder Star Series uh, rankings go. TCM versus Power Rangers will be next. Power Rangers is in the same situation as Empire, where they have to win fights, have to win games to stay in Star Series to begin with. TCM is doing pretty well. Their chances of going to Kiev, though, very low still, as they have five losses, I believe, in Star Series, so are um, pretty much no longer in a, a chance to go to Kiev, but we'll still try to see if they can at least take some games here and get higher up the rankings. Anyways, let's jump ourselves into the next game. We'll be there for you. Kpoptosis at, at Kpoptosis on Twitter, without the hyphen, is providing you stats. Of course, uh, there is uh, my co-caster Vikramont at Vikramont on Twitter as well, and at Shiver Gaming for myself. We'll be here for the next game for you as well. Stick around for more Dota 2 action for Star Letter Season 6, day number 22.